WordPress, you're dead to me because I have found this static website generator. I'm using Hugo right now, but I gotta say, this is the future for me. Now, I know that's gonna make a lot of people mad. People are running to the comments already going, WordPress forever. But I'm gonna tell you as an administrator, as someone that doesn't design websites professionally for a living, I honestly think if you fit into this category, you should never be using WordPress because after seeing this workflow, it has changed my life. It has changed this channel. It has made me far more productive, fast, efficient, more secure, everything that you could possibly think of, this is what it does. And I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna get on the desktop. I'm gonna show you my new workflow and it's gonna just blow your mind. I'm gonna tell you right now, I still can't believe how awesome it is and you're probably tired of seeing my comments and things of that on Twitter and also my community posts about this. And now you're gonna understand why I'm so jazzed, just pumped about uh, this static site generator. This video is brought to you by SkySilk. Affordable pricing, simple automation, scaling, and VPS deployment tools carefully designed to offer resources that fit any project. Their pricing starts as low as $2 a month, and I've used them personally for about the past six months to host a Minecraft server. Link is in the description. So I took about an hour or so and wrote this entire guide of every single modification I did and how I set up the Hugo site. I'm not gonna go over all that in this video as you can simply read the webpage, christitis.com forward slash Hugo dash guide. As far as breaking down this whole process, I'm gonna go over it real fast with you. Uh, installing Hugo, basically you just do a yay or apt get and install Hugo. Now I will say with Debian, and I noted it here, that it did install an old version. So when I tried to use the theme I was trying to use, it wasn't quite up to date. So I ended up going right onto their GitHub and downloading the latest DEB file and using dpackage to install that. So you can easily install the latest version on any Linux distribution, but uh, I'm using Arch here and, and I think on an inside machine, I was using Debian and it just installed an old version. So that's how I got around that. Now, as far as the quick start guide, this basically gives you a directory structure and I'm gonna show you that real fast of this right here. Um, this gives you archetypes, uh, content, data, layouts, public, resources, static, and themes. When you install your theme, it actually drops the theme right into this three themes folder. Inside here, you have kind of the exact same site layout. Now, you don't have to edit much in here if you don't want to. I chose to do some heavy modifications because there's things and, and special things I really wanted to get across and when I did my website. So I went ahead and made all those changes. Now. As far as my changes, I'm not gonna go over all of them as it would take a long time and this would probably be an hour long video. But if you go into theme modification here, I go over changing like the social widget. I wanted to do Twitch and YouTube and some other ones that weren't a part of this theme. So I kind of showcase how to edit the actual social.html file and add that. Um, I also modified the tags widget. I didn't like how the tags were laid out and I wanted a unique tag cloud to where when you're on the site itself, you could actually see the tag cloud. And uh, I'll show that real fast. You'll see on the right side here, we have this giant tag cloud. So you can see bigger, bigger things, meaning I made a lot of stuff about exchange server where the smaller things, it might only be like one post or two posts with that tag. So it kind of tells you the things I've written about in the past 10 years, because all these were actually converted WordPress posts. Uh, now, a lot of them were not formatted correctly. Uh, I had to do a lot of work to get them to the state they are now, but I can easily go like say exchange server, go to one of these old articles from three or four years ago and all the formatting's uniform, everything looks good and it just works fantastic. So this is the power of Hugo just from browsing around. You can just see how fast it is and all that. Now, as far as the Hugo static guide that I've actually going over on this video, I haven't added the images yet because I used the actual thumbnail from YouTube. So as this goes live, it'll pull in that thumbnail and everything's right with the world. And also everything's automated. So 
this will take me probably about a fourth of the time as it would WordPress. Uh, now, if you're a heavy WordPress developer, I'm sure you could have some tricks to teach me and things, but I never have been a real WordPress developer. I've only used it in passing and helped people administer it, but I've never actually built out an entire WordPress site from scratch, actually building plugins and those types of things to make it efficient. This was a huge boon to my workflow and performance. So I went ahead and changed the social, the tags, uh, the header and footer, just slight modifications to add like terms of service and a privacy policy just to say, stay compliant with like the EU. And then table of contents changes. If we go up at the top here, you'll see this share on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or through email. Now, all these are not there by default. I actually added this entire thing. It used to say page contents and then just list all this, but I didn't like it. I mean, it's kind of obvious this is the page contents. So I thought, why not just change that to a share button platform? You know, to each his own, but you can customize this. And that's the whole purpose of this video is to show you, you can customize this any which way you want, which is extremely powerful. So I modified this theme, did a table of contents, modification tags, uh, lastly, just kind of did a custom script on all pages to add like Google AdSense in. Uh, I think actual Google AdSense was part of this theme, but I wanted to go ahead and add in the auto ads and things of that nature. I wasn't sure how they did the AdSense, so I wanted to utilize this method of actually doing AdSense by changing in the defaults base of directory. This file's called for every single page, so I know that I can easily add in like a partial here. And this partial, is simply a file I drop into layouts, partials, AdSense. So the layout is extremely intuitive when you're going over this. This is the theme which you really don't need to change, but I was just kind of showcasing the modifications I did. But let's say you're kind of a noob and, and you don't want to do it. Uh, you can easily come right into your root, your site root, go into layouts, partials, and these are all files I created, like those share buttons on the top of the table of contents, I went ahead and just did a partial, replaced the title, which was page contents with just those uh, close, those opening and closing brackets, and then just share buttons. And that's all laid out in this guide. So you can see when I actually made the change in base of, all I did was add this line right here, opening brackets, partial, AdSense dash auto dot HTML. And that corresponds to this file over here in my site root. So very, very powerful that you can just easily make these changes. And then if they don't work out, you're just uncommenting one file or one line in this base of file. And then it just goes back to normal. So it's really easy to tinker. So I was able to really make a ton of changes really quickly and uh, build out just a fantastic site. So with that, as far as configuration goes, everything in the site root, if we go to the site root here, you'll see this config.toml file. You'll see this is the file right here. Very well documented, literally no changes needed to be made at all. All I did was read the little comments to the right here, fill in what I needed to fill in, and away I went. But I did add this menu right here. Now this menu, uh, it was like home. I wanted a, a proper home button. I wanted to donate to go ahead and link to my Patreon. And then I wanted like a remote support button. So if someone was on the phone with me, I'd be like, hey, go to ChrisTitus.com, click remote support, and it just downloads a, a quick support client from TeamViewer. So very easy to customize as you see here uh, and just fantastic. And to showcase that menu, that's all right here as far as the menu is concerned. Works great. I can click home. It takes me right back home. Here's the table of contents. Now, we were talking about config.toml, which I just went over. Uh, but really, this is the best part of Hugo that I don't think anybody really talks about or really leverages is the templates. This right here in the site root archetypes default.md, you add all the stuff that you want. I do this on every single web post I've ever done. And in WordPress, a lot of times I was copy pasting stuff. Um, I was constantly changing the categories and tags. All this is just kind of laid out. And for the thumbnail, I'm able to just say, hey, it's always going to be the actual name of the file that the markdown file is. And that's going to be my thumbnail. So after I finish with this video and I publish it, I'll have that thumbnail in there and it just gets dropped into this directory and I'm done.
It literally makes all this super easy. I do do custom URLs because I like to uh, specify the slug that you see on the actual URL. So if it's, you know, fixing Windows 10 or something like that, I want the actual web page to be fixing dash windows dash 10. I want it to be something simple that people can get to and I can actually put it in the description of my video or on the actual uh, screen right now and then you could easily just type it in without any hassle. So I like to do custom URLs for everything um, and then just categories and tags. Categories I like to make as general and broad as possible and then tags I like to drill down and kind of show something different. Now I put in kind of dummy things here but I can just delete these, rename them. It just kind of is a reminder. So when I go to create something all this is filled in. So I wanted to showcase that real fast because I don't think I've really seen anything on the net about this. And it's something that is just crazy awesome. So we'll go ahead and make a new file. We'll just go Hugo Post. Now this is the guide I created, but let's say a uh, new package.md. And we'll go ahead and create that. And then let's say I wanted to actually edit that. And I just go, I, I can nano it, I can G edit, whatever. You, you know, pick your poison as far as text editing goes, but let's just say I wanted to do it all in terminal. So from here, we'll go ahead and do nano into this. You'll see it created the title of the web page, new space package. Uh, the URL is actually new dash package. So if you're really broad with your titles, obviously you wouldn't want this kind of structure, but this is just a template I created. By default, Hugo only fills in the title and the date. And I, I don't even think the type is there. Uh, so I think really I, I filled in all this other stuff. So the thumbnail, I want to actually specify the thumbnail. And I went ahead and made custom new-package.jpg. That way I know every time I create a video or a, a word or a web page, I, I can easily just say, okay, I know what to name that thumbnail and drop it into that folder and I'm done. And then categories, tags, the dash dash more, I, I like to put my first paragraph and I want that to be the preview that you see on the list view. So I put, this is the list summary right here. And then let's say I wanted to put more stuff on the summary afterwards. Well, I can just do this and come after and go more stuff that I don't want in the summary of list view. So right there, we've done that. More stuff I don't want in the summary of list view. And the categories and tags, let's say this was new package. And then for categories, let's just say it was only available for Linux. And I can add other categories. It, it does everything on the fly, so it's not like I need to specify a specific category or a specific tag. These can be new tags and categories. Just know that it will add that to your page. So you want to be very specific, and I only like using maybe about 10 categories as I don't want my categories to get bloated up on the main screen. And then as you see, it added all this in right here. Now it's standard markdown. So if you want to add stuff to the end of the page or just do a single line break, you can do that. So for lists, I like to do just like list one, two, list two, or let's say you wanted to do unordered list space, space, dash space, unordered one, unordered two. So you can get bullet points. You can get everything right here with a simple markdown. You can make the actual table of contents with just the two hashes and say subject one, subject two, and then let's say you wanted a sub subject, so sub subject two, and then that would kind of put it indented into that. So it has all the heading and everything right there. Just simple markdown. I'm not gonna go too much into markdown as this right here is just enough to get you started with markdown. So let's say you're done, you kind of got it all going. So I, I normally would remove draft and then write out. And then from here, I can just go Hugo server, and then this would rebuild my static site. So if I just go into here, I go up to home, there's my new package. This is the list summary right here. It's all right there. So you have lists, unordered lists, subjects, sub subjects. All of it is just easily at a click of a button. Gosh, it just makes things so much easier as you just saw in that short couple minute span of me talking and doing it. If I'm not talking, I can do this in minutes a lot of times. So uh, it's awesome if you're really familiar with Markdown. Oh, it's just 
so simple. From here, let's say you have everything and we wanna publish right to christitus.com. Now, I do have that Hugo on there, uh, this Hugo static site, so I will put that in draft as I don't want that listed on christitus.com just yet. We'll go ahead and cancel this. I'm gonna launch into here, delete that file. If we go into 2020, I just kinda of have it shortcutted on my, <laughs> my file manager. We'll remove that. Um, and let's like, take a look at Hugo guide. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a live push with the Hugo guide here. Uh, I don't want it to show up quite a bit and I think I actually have my caching set to a pretty uh, long level. So let's uh, actually, let's, let's go ahead and drop a JPEG in there. I'll probably redo the JPEG, but uh, for now let's grab Hugo and show you what it takes to, to grab that actual guide. So we'll copy this Hugo. It's not too big, only 52K. So we'll come back into our root and I'll drop it into that thumbs directory, go paste. And we need to rename this Hugo guide, rename. And just to test this out to make sure it works, we'll rerun our server, see what this looks like. Come back to here, go home. And I did Hugo dash guide JPEG. So that was actually a PNG file. So I'd probably need to open this up file and save it as a JPEG. We'll go ahead and quit out of that and I'll remove that guy. So if we go back to our site, you'll see it already rebuilt and that's it. So that's as quick as it does everything just by dragging and dropping a file, all that for static sites. Wow, I mean, crazy. Now this isn't live yet, but it's pretty much done. I mean, there'll probably be some edits I need to make for this video that I might come back and add to. Uh, so jackpack with christitis.com on this page, but this at least should get you going. So you kind of understand all the things I've done uh, to make Hugo as functional as it is for me. But I'm ready to publish. And if we go to christitis.com, you'll see we have all that. Now uh, we need to push this to it. So I actually made a script, but usually you can do this in like a Hugo deploy, uh, but I don't use Hugo deploy as I'm using a storage bucket in Google Cloud Platform right now, as it's not actually on a server, it's actually in just a serverless storage bucket that's multi-region. So literally there's no chance of it actually ever going down, uh, which is amazing. So let's go ahead and deploy it. I just made a deploy script. And before I do that, I'm gonna just kind of showcase the deploy script. All it does is run the Hugo command, which builds all the static files. And then it just takes those files, drops them into the christitis.com storage bucket, and then that's it. So let's deploy Hugo to my site, and then we'll actually pull it up on christitis.com right now. So we'll go sh deploy. This deploys, it, it already built all the site, built it in about 267 milliseconds. And now it's uploading the entire site. Now where this could get unwieldy is if you had a whole bunch of stuff to upload or things changing all the time, and it was just a massive site. If you had thousands upon thousands of posts, this could get uh, a lot. But for me, you know, 30 megs is pretty much my entire site now, which is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I remember I exported my WordPress and I think the SQL alone was almost uh, a couple hundred megs or something. I, I did a lot of house cleaning and it just works so great now. So I'll refresh this. It probably won't show up as I do have aggressive caching. I have a front end, which is uh, Cloudflare. So it always makes sure it's caching my site and those types of things. So I just get the absolute best performance. And then we'll just go Hugo dash guide. And there it is. It's already been deployed. It's already uploaded to christitis.com. Literally that simple. I mean, that is amazing. So you can do all your stuff locally in a test bed, do some really crazy changes. And then if it doesn't work out, okay, no problem. And just revert them. Or you just say, okay, everything looks good. And then just hit deploy and you're done. So I do this probably a couple times a week now. Almost all my videos, any of my tutorial videos, I'll be making uh, files like this so you can easily copy paste and I can go into greater depth. Uh, before when I was doing WordPress, a lot of like the loading and changing the files, logging in using WP admin and all these just really cumbersome tasks have uh, kind of become very simple with this. Now, I think the most people argue is there's not a lot of uh, actual graphics in here and I probably will add more graphics in the future. And obviously I can, I already have the structure for that. 
uh, to where I could just drop it into, you know, a folder and just say, hey, all the graphics in this folder and, and pop them in there using Markdown. Very simple. I love that a lot better than, than the WordPress way of uploading it. And WordPress usually smushes the image and does weird stuff to it. All kinds of shenanigans happen with WordPress where this is as good as you make it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I absolutely love it. Boom. Done. That's it. That is static site generation. And it is absolutely amazing. I can't tell you how many headaches WordPress has given me over the years. And if you're not a WordPress developer or you're not designing plugins and making a really clean WordPress with only a, a handful of plugins, then uh, obviously switch to this. It was well worth the, about a month of time I put into making my website what it is today. And I am just so over the moon happy with it because I was literally to a point with my old WordPress where I was like, you know what, I might just pay someone and get this done. So uh, I don't have to do that anymore. And I am just so in love with this right now that uh, I, I, I couldn't see anything, any way this could possibly get any better. But uh, who knows, you know, stay, in, stay tuned. Uh, you, you, there's so much you can do with it. I can move it anywhere I want. I moved it from Apache to this to that. I mean, it's just, there's so much you can do with uh, static site generation and you no longer are locked down to a server or a service or anything like that. It is just game changing. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm sure we're going to see some WordPress guys get in here freaking out that they might lose their job or those types of things. Don't worry about it as static site generation is great for like a one man band like me, as you saw how fast and efficient it was. Yeah, I think it's going to kill a lot of those just one offs using WordPress. But when it comes to a big company using a WordPress design, CMS and content management systems like WordPress will be around for a long time because when you get a big team or a company, it can be a little bit more of a manage where you're not going to obviously do these types of setups. But if you're just one guy with a WordPress website, no, that's going to be a thing of the past if you have the knowledge that I showed in this video because there's no way WordPress would come out ahead any day of the week. So with that, Thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.